rejection sampling is a simple and clever way to draw random samples from even very complicated probability distributions. Rejection sampling, as opposed to the Smirnoff method, is, is very general in that you can handle you know, complicated distributions, and also those distributions can be on higher dimensional spaces. One disadvantage of rejection sampling is that it can be hard to pull off, especially in high dimensions, it can be hard to design a rejection sampling algorithm for a particular distribution that is efficient, that doesn't take too long to get you your samples. First, we're going to focus on the uniform case, uniform case, that is rejection sampling when you want to draw samples from a uniform distribution on some complicated set. So our goal here is to generate uniform samples, or let's say samples from the uniform distribution on some set A, where A is some complicated set. A is complicated complicated. And here, this could be a discrete, you know, like a, a finite set or a, a countable set, in which case this would be a discrete distribution, or it could be, this could be, ha you know, a distribution with a density, like a subset of, of Rn or something like that. And here's an example. I, I, since we were talking about the Mandelbrot set earlier, I thought this would be a fun example. So example, sample, some random variable uniform over A, where so we'll just put the Mandelbrot set. Uniform over the Mandelbrot set. And this is the black pixels here in this, this square are, are the Mandelbrot set. And it's a super complicated set. It's extraordinarily complicated. So how would you, how could you do this? You know, how, how is this, how is this possible? Well, it turns out there actually is, there is a method to do this, you know, qu quite efficiently. And so I'm assuming, I'm, so one thing that we need to assume is that we can evaluate whether a point is in the set or not. So we need to have, so we assume that we can evaluate this indicator function for the set A. And for the Mandelbrot set, actually, technically speaking, you know, since it has to be, you have to determine whether a sequence is bounded, that might not actually be possible but assume that we can you know we can do it to some you know we can do it to some degree of accuracy with this so assume that you can do it perfectly and I would encourage you at this point to pause the video and think about how would you do this so pause now and think about how you would do that and then we'll come back in a second and and we'll 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 see how to actually do this Okay, so let's see how to do it. We'll state a proposition. Well, maybe I'll first, I'll just tell you the, in the intuition. The, the basic idea behind rejection sampling is that you draw a bunch of samples, maybe I'll put them in red here. You draw a bunch of samples from a larger set. So maybe this, maybe this rectangle out here. Maybe we know that all of the points in the Mandelbrot set are contained in this rectangle. But we just draw uniform samples from this larger set. Maybe something like this. We get these samples uniformly from this set. And whenever we get a sample that's not in the set, like this one here, when it's not in the Mandelbrot set, then we reject it. We just throw it out and we keep going. We keep going until we get a point in the set. So, so maybe to back up and, for example, if the first point I drew was here, we would say, toss it out, reject it. And then if I drew another point and it was here, then we would say, okay, that's our sample. And in general, whenever, you know, we get a point outside, we throw it out and we keep going till we get one inside. Maybe here, 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 and then we get one. And we reject those others. So we only keep that one. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And let's, let's state a proposition that will guarantee that, in fact, those do that. That procedure does generate does generate 
samples from this distribution. So if A is a subset of some other set B and Y1 to Yn are, well, actually, let's make it, in, we need to make it an infinite sequence, Y1, Y2, up to just keep on going, are all uniformly drawn, are all uniform random variables with this distribution over B and their IID. And we take X capital K to be, actually, X to be Y capital K, where capital K is the smallest, it's the min, it's the first K for which one of the, for which uh, YK lands in the set A. So this is the min over positive integers K such that YK is in A. So if all that, then X is uniformly distributed over the set A. So this is a, a little bit, uh, you know, if you haven't seen this sort of thing, the, the index, it's a little bit non-intuitive because the index here, K, is, a, is actually a random variable itself. So just keep an eye on that. This K is a random, and so YK, not only the sequence is random, but then which one we pick is random. And so that this just formalizes what I just described here. And this gives us one sample, x. The proof of this, I'm not going to do the proof in detail because it's, it's just a straightforward exercise, actually. But I'll give you a hint, so I'll say exercise, but a hint is first try the discrete case. For a uniform distribution, it's either going to be a discrete distribution if it's a countable set or it's going to be, it's going to have a density. And the hint is try the discrete case first and use the geometric series. Think about how you would use a geometric series to prove this. You've got an infinite sequence here, so that sort of clues you in as to where this is going to come in. Okay, so that's rejection sampling for the uniform case. And now let's think about the non-uniform case. So the non-uniform case, case. For the non-uniform case, it's a clever it's a clever trick, and in, in fact, it uses the uniform case. So I, that's why I wanted to, especially why I wanted to state that one first. So let's say we have our PDF, and let's focus on let's focus on the case of a of a density. Let's say with density, this generalizes also to, uh, this works also for discrete random variables, but to make things concrete, let's focus on the case of a density. So let's say our distribution, our PDF is something like this. It could be some super complicated thing, but you know, just say it's like that. Then what we do is choose a distribution that has uh, at least some probability mass at all the points where this one is positive. So it can't be, so maybe something like this, we, we couldn't choose it to be like zero here. That would not work. So we just need it to be positive wherever this other one is positive. And then the basic, the rough idea is that you draw samples from this purple distribution. Maybe we get, maybe we get a sample here. And then you, you reject some of the samples. And the ones that you reject, then you, of course, you start over just like, just like before. You, you start over the procedure completely until you, until you don't reject. And the criteria for rejecting is random. You reject randomly where the probability depends on how big the blue, the thing we're trying to sample from, is compared to the purple, the thing that we actually sampled from. 
And if the blue is very high, then we will have a high probability of accepting. And if the blue is very is much lower, like over here, then we would have a lower probability of accepting. And there's a way to do this. So I, maybe I didn't emphasize, well, I guess it's sort of stated in the theorem. There's a way to do this so that you get samples from the true distribution blue, exact samples. This is not an approximation. You get exact samples from the blue. And of course, that was the same in the uniform case too. We got it. We we got exact samples. X was uniform. Okay. So let's state how this is done. That was the rough idea, and here's here's the more formal. The formal statement. So our goal in this case is to sample from a complicated PDF on RD. Maybe I'll write that. Our goal, sample from a complicated PDF on RD, d-dimensional space. And the, the, of course, I think I mentioned, I don't know if maybe I didn't mention this. Yeah, I think I did. Th this uniform one also applies for higher dimensions, of course. So here's how it goes. So we're given, that's our goal, and we're given some F tilde. We're not actually given, so w if we're, we could be given the, the PDF, let's call it F. We, we could be given the PDF and everything would work, but in fact, we don't even need the PDF. All we need is this F tilde where F, the, the, the true thing, the, the actual PDF, is F tilde divided by some constant, let's call it alpha. Alpha is positive. So we only know the true one, we only need to know the true one up to this multiplicative constant. And here's how it goes. Actually, I'm going to run out of time here before I finish it. So let me uh, stop there and um, to, to really be able to have time to give a, a clear explanation of the, the algorithm for the non-uniform non case. We'll stop there and we'll, we'll resume in another video. Okay, see you soon.